good evening, uh, Tambona. Am I right? I'm going to share a little more today to give uh, a particular message that because it has been a long time, let's do the usual. Yeah, no. You introduce yourself to the person on the left. You tell them who you are, why you here, where do you work. Uh, you exchange the numbers, uh, office numbers, your fax number, your ID number, uh, your registration number. Okay, I think we're about to start now. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't mind, can we then rise or stand so that we can welcome our guest speaker today, the chair, or the chair of, uh, you know, Shell. Southern Africa, Linda de Morris Hadeb. Let's give them a round of applause. I think we can do better than that. I think we can do better than that. Mr. Ndolo, I think we can do better than that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. My, my name is Sipio Masisa. It's nice and home here. My name is Sipio Masisa. I am your program director today. An organization founded by our chair, Linda de Morris Hadebe, an entrepreneur par excellence. Kageko fana nawe. Nati tula si kageko fana nawe. Nati si kageko fana nawe mkonde. So kageko fana nawe mkonde. When I started Excel, you know, then they converted it to, you know, to Sasol. They sold and then they made a lot of money. You know? <laughs> yeah. And uh, now he's the chair of Excel Oil. Vice President, uh, you know, MAG at uh, Circle Group. He's the Vice President, and uh, he's the founder of UFC, who is the, the founding body, the mentor to most of us, if not all of us who are here. Uh, and he's here right now. We have seen him. We are very phenomenal people who are here. We have seen him at the Circle Group Expo on Sundays here. He's the Vice President at home, and he's here with us. And by the time you're facing from but I think all things will be better on your side. And then um, for those who are new here, this is ULC. We use this place for various reasons. We, if you want to book this place, if you want to get married, you come and get married here. If you want to do activations, you have a new product, you want to launch a strategy, um, you want to have a board meeting, you don't want to be in Santin, you want to come to a place where there is peace, you know, that, that supersedes all understanding. You come here, you know, you'll find that peace and joy unspeakable. Uh, we have a house that side. It has a boardroom. It has AV facilities, world class. We have a swimming pool that side. If you can swim, uh, you know, we're building a chapel that side. So that's a We do everything here. And then um, if you want to get more details, there's a guy at the back. An incredible soul, a friend of mine, a partner that we do a lot of things together. And that, uh, that, uh, <laughs> uh, that's the man. That's the he's the he's the CEO of uh, ULP. Make sure you talk to him if you wanna book the place. Uh, uh, it's Pio Mashiko. If you don't know him, you talk to him. But over and above, we had a lot of speakers that we have hosted for the past. Five years. That the mother started this thing five years from his house, which, you know, we're chased away from his house, you know, to here. Um, we had Dr. Ruel Koza. Uh, we had uh, uh, Bonang Mohale, uh, Putumantleko, Frank Chikane, uh, uh, Pilisiwe, Me Pilisiwe. We, a lot of speakers. My request to you that you may not want to buy the CD for yourself, but I know that uh, you know, you're extending a hand to your brother and sister as you rise. Make sure you buy some few DVDs you know, for your colleague, for your neighbor, you know, for people that you are mentoring at work. They are outside. We take all forms of cards. You know, if you have a credit card, we take it. If you have a debit card, we take it. If you have a Sasa card, we swipe. You, you know, uh, if, if, yeah, and it goes through if you buy this DVD. And make sure that let's let's make sure that we support 
uh, we, you know, uh, Bob Morris is not making money out of this initiative. Actually, he's spending his money for this. Um, and and, and the, the least you could do is to, is to you know, there's a saying that says, as you rise, extend a hand to your brother and to your sister. And the only way you can extend your hand, um, you know, to your brother and to your sister is to make sure that you get a few of these DVDs, you know, for your protégés, for your employees, uh, you know, for your friends. You know, it's the little things that you do that have an impact. That's why, the, that's why there's a saying that says when a butterfly, you know, deep down in Amazon, when it flings its wings, it affects a weather pattern in India. It's these small investments that we make that have an impact to, you know, to the lives of other people. Today we are blessed from the tip of our toes to the crown of our head to have the big boss, you know, from Shell, who will be giving us an inspirational, uh, very powerful, impactful, you know, story, you know, from Utubuyago, P. Gwenzegeni, Ugupi Manje, Uyago, P. Namatenda, Gutapuma, Gubinyaze, Vanyo, Funubuz, Yavana, the tender, Lena, Hudman, and Lea, Yana, Yavana, Yazo, Yavana, Talang, Punisha, Lingara, the Orange Farm, Uzokjela, go to what is the process, you know, we told again, Jani Mali, at least when I was telling you, Kuni, Nuzela, and Wagban, Yavana, Yana, but let's have a good time. Let's ask, you know, especially in the oil and gas space, the landscape is changing. And I know that the government and Abu Babu Morris, through Sabia, they're driving the whole transformation agenda. That's why on the, on the 14th or on the 4th, we have women in oil and gas where we drive transformation. And we have a number of, pa of partners. Where it is, it is, yeah, it is, yeah. You know, on the, on the, on the, on the 4th, here. Yeah started this conversation to say that particular when it comes to oil and gas. Uh, we'll be talking about that. And women were invited to come and attend those, uh, you know, that event. But you know, don't just rock and say, oh, my Caesar's invited. Make sure that you talk to Theo. If not, you talk to Ponzo Tlagwane. We work together, Ponzo Emela. Make sure that if you are interested to attend the oil and gas you know, summit that is happening, and it's driven by Obabo Morris Khadebe, who's very passionate about, genera about uh, developing the next generation of leaders in all industries. I can say more. I can work, you know, poetic and lyrical about Obabo Morris, and I don't want to say more, but Obabo Morris thinks a million, and I'm not going to say much. In terms of the format, if you're new here, I'm the, I'm the resident, uh, you know, MC here. I'm the tender, like MC, I, I'm a pro, uh, the, the program uh, uh, and the tender lay is renewable every year. Uh, it's non-negotiable. It's a fixed contract, and <laughs> you know. And um, and the format is that I'll do the introduction. Obama Morris will come and then will give us a broader view, and then he will then introduce the chair. Once the chair is done speaking, I will then come over. I will do the Q and A. Once the Q and A is done, we'll do the announcement. We'll then call our chair to do the vote of thanks. And then basically, I'm going to punch this your banana. Then it is done. You know, uh, you know, without waste, uh, you know, of time. Let's welcome our, our chair, Bob Morris. Let's give him a round of applause. I know we can do better than for that. Thank you so much. I think before we, we, we launch into uh, the speaker, first of all, uh, I'm, I'm going to introduce him in detail, but I'm so proud of him because he brought Uncle Skazuake, his wife. Omasi Chaba. Can you stand, Mama Skazuake, when she says, Where is she? 
Mas Chaba, those who listen to radio, no, give him a round, give him a round of applause. That's why this man is strong. We am supporter. Yeah. Nala Pedro in our in the house there at TLP while we're waiting. He did some, she did something which my wife also do. We support. Yeah, that's very important. Uh, so I'm very proud that we promote very strong uh, family values here. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all our leaders that are here, and we thank you for coming. Uh, it's great to see you. Uh, but it is a, even one is here, comrade, yeah. Jesus, who's that comrade? Viva. <laughs> it's Nelson Mandela's centenary, and uh, I thought, Theo, you know what? It's very important that we recognize that Nelson Mandela spent 27 years in jail, and most of us were even young, and uh, some of most of us were not even born, and uh, he did a great job. Ah, even my wife is here. So stand up, my wife. Yeah, let's see. Uh, so stand up. Uh, she was so tired. She's been working so hard. She told me uh, uh, that I, today in Zawe, in Tati off, uh, because she does all the background work. Uh, and uh, she's the reason why we're here. Yeah? And uh, those who know ULP, we used to meet in her house and until we got kitted out to come here. Because we're too many. Uh, so Nelson Mandela, Nelson Mandela uh, spent 27 years in jail, came out. He could have been a bitter man, uh, and he could have called this country uh, into uh, chaos. Uh, those who know that day when Kisani was killed, uh, on that day the whole country was a tent of hooks. As some of us were young and uh, we grew up in Eburuleng. And if those who remember Eguruleng, Eguruleng was at the heart of violence at that time. The SDUs were strong. I can see Nabo, Nabo, Boro, Abo, Joe uh, here. And the guys were armed to the teeth. And they were just waiting for Nelson Mandela on TV on that night to say, Bulala Mapono, Tubula. And we were waiting there in anticipation. And Nelson Mandela stood there. And I think that was an anointing that was on him. I really believe so. He said words and he said, listen, Krishani has been killed by a white man. But there was a white woman who saw it and was able to alert the police and the man was arrested. So take all your guns, put them back and let's negotiate peace. Let's give Nelson Mandela a round of applause. So in honor of him, I thought we will open uh, this session today, and I think we'll do it all the time now, uh, with a national anthem. And, uh, and I believe actually it's a national prayer, uh, because uh, and we've been praying for over 100 years, and that's why we averted a civil war that would have plunged this country into a major, major crisis. Uh, trust me, I've been in different countries throughout the, the continent that have been ravaged by civil war and are trying to recover. It's painful. It's difficult. Uh, just uh, next to us here, Mozambique, that civil war is painful. There's a lot of business that we do there, but it's painful to recover from that. So we really truly must uh, uh, So I ask you to stand up and we sing our national anthem. Those who do not know it, we'll see it uh, uh, on the screen and, and read it and re sing all the portions of it, okay? <laughs>
wonderful, wonderful. Thank God for Nelson Mandela. So, but he's challenged us to take the baton and, and run with it. And this is why we are here. I'm going to introduce our speaker. And in his own uh, right, in the space in which we are, we must all do our best. Uh, the name of our speaker, Mr. Shoni P. Zwe. Shoni P. Zwe. Shoni P. Zwe. Yeah. Mdolo. Sharman, chairman of the board of Shell Companies. Uh, I grew up in that company. And I'm very, very, very grateful that I had an opportunity to, as a youngster to be schooled uh, in, uh, in, in, in Shell. Chairman of the board of Shell of companies. This includes Shell South Africa Holdings, Shell South Africa Energy, and Shell Downstream uh, South Africa. And he chairs all these companies inside the organization and is a member of the board. Uh, on top of that, he's a true retailer. You know, I really like one of the key, 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 key messages that we send uh, here at ULP is that focus, 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 particularly because in your career, as young, black, talented people, you will be, uh, and I know when I grew up, most of my friends uh, now and again uh, uh, started a job here. Uh, Twelve months later, there's another one because there's the highest bidder. And the next 18 months is a, in another job. And, uh, and by the time you reach your 40s, you've been in 10 jobs. And you're looking for a job, and, uh, and you come for CV to us here. And we look at your CV, and you say, this is a checkered career here. And you didn't know one thing. You didn't focus. So he's been a retailer throughout his whole life for the last 27 years. But he started at a technical background in the laboratory. And, uh, and he decided, no, 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 I'm not going to be playing with uh, uh, laboratory stuff. Uh, and I know that because I came up in that background also. And he decided to focus on retail. And if uh, his CV is long, but I've summarized it, but he's done a lot of retail uh, work. Uh, he studied at Wirtz, uh, doing a management program. Also studied uh, uh, in the uh, University of Notre Dame in, in the U.S. And uh, so he's prepared himself with solid experience as well as uh, uh, academic qualification. And that's what we're promoting here at ULP. Uh, so uh, without any further ado, uh, let's welcome Mr. Mtolo to come up front here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. leaving uh, the office this afternoon um, uh, as I was leaving uh, my assistant says to me hey hey uh, hey yakho and she gave me my iPhone <laughs> <laughs> um, I think uh, uh, it is appropriate to to thank you uh, uh, Morris for the invitation uh, it is uh, an, an honor a privilege and a humbling experience uh, to be here today, this, this evening, especially uh, when the invitation comes from you, because uh, some of us, and a lot of us, we really and truly look up to you uh, as someone that, uh, uh, not, not as a joke, but for real, when you say, when we grow up, I want to be like that. And thank you, sir. So when Maurice uh, uh, invited me, he said to me, um, just share your experience in terms of um, how uh, you've come up to, to be where you are today and what it's, what it's been like. So it's been, uh, it was a, a difficult one because uh, from, from where I sit and how I understand things is that uh, for me it's just been a journey and uh, I haven't looked at it as, a, as anything remarkable. It's just been... Um, oh, things have uh, sort of um, evolved and how things have happened. So uh, for him to say, look, um, share it, maybe uh, 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 one or two uh, 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 people might just uh, see it as, uh, as something that they can look up to. It was, it, was, uh, it was humbling, as I said. So how I sort of thought I'm going to do this is that I'll probably just um, share who I am, 
where do I come from, and maybe a little bit about what I've done uh, uh, um, uh, career-wise, uh, and then maybe share one or two reflections uh, uh, that um, uh, I've drawn uh, uh, from this journey. So from who I am is uh, um, maybe some of the places that I'm going to be mentioning, they might not sound familiar because I'm not from this part of the world. Uh, I'm more from uh, the province with a uh, name and a surname, Guazulu uh, Natal. My mother um, worked uh, uh, in a place called Cowies Hill, which is uh, next to uh, uh, Westville. Um, uh, he worked there uh, for a family as a domestic worker. And um, she met my father, uh, who worked um, in Pine Town as a, as, as a laborer in a, in a hardware store. So for whatever reason, they liked each other. Uh, my mother was a divorcee. Uh, and my dad uh, was very married with uh, two wives. Uh, and my mother then joined the club and, beca and became the third wife. <laughs> yeah. So there was a bit of a, an age thing as well between my mama and my father because uh, I think probably about 20 years or so. Uh, so, I mean, I would think then uh, my dad was a bit of a chicken murder type of thing because, <laughs> yeah. But so they met, um, uh, 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 and uh, I was uh, the product of that courtship. Uh, as I said, my mother was the third wife. Uh, my father came from a place called uh, Ekopo, which is about, um, say, two hours from Durban, um, where he, uh, the family has a, a, a small place there uh, that my dad bought in 1954. Um, so, uh, and my father lived uh, in Pine Town at his workplace. So my mother lived also at her workplace. Uh, and then when I came around, my dad then said to my mother, uh, let's find you a room where you can stay and raise uh, uh, the baby. So we had a one room uh, home in Claremont where it was our home and we lived there from Monday to Friday. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, my mother and I would go and visit my father uh, at his work and spend the weekend there. Those days were very important for me, the f Saturday and, uh, and Sunday, because I got to spend time with the two of them. But also it was exciting for me because uh, uh, I got to go to the toilet there because it was a flushing toilet. <laughs> uh, uh, and uh, in Claremont, where we lived, uh, we had the bucket system. Uh, uh, and uh, I always looked forward to... Um, going to my dad's uh, uh, work and I can go and uh, use this magic toilet because it was the first time I had seen it. I have very, very fond memories of this, uh, uh, of my weekends because um, I can still picture the, the single bed that the three of us shared. Uh, uh, it had this uh, floral uh, bedspread that used to uh, 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 cover it. And I think when it started its life, this bedspread must have been red. But by the time I, I came around and, and saw it, it was uh, pinkish. Uh, it had had its time. The interesting thing about this is that uh, I always find it fascinating. I still haven't figured it out how it happened like this. Because whenever we went to bed, uh, I used to go uh, and be between my mother and father. But in the morning, uh, <laughs> I was always uh, uh, on a small mat uh, next to the bed. And I could never understand how did this happen, but uh, uh, that's how it was. So, yeah, that was that. Um, I grew, uh, and one thing that I can share, which for me uh, was an experience, is that th this was. I'd, I'd never, I'd never remember. I'd, I can never remember my mother saying to me up, up till she died last year. I can never remember my mother saying to me, I love you. Uh, not once. But I don't think there's any love that could surpass that. I grew up in an environment that was uh, extremely loving. Uh, at that time, I mean, as a young person, right up to probably I got to um, high school, I never even realized that we were as poor as anybody can be because of how loving and how warm these two individuals were. 
it is uh, uh, important also to, to point out that uh, I had siblings. So I had um, uh, five brothers that were older than me, obviously, and two sisters. So altogether there was eight of us. Uh, and my siblings were much older than me. Uh, 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 my siblings, some of them had children that were older than me by the time I was born. So, <laughs> yeah. But that's how it was. So we, we grew up in this, I grew up in this environment then uh, uh, of living with my parents. So my wife was the, was, my mother was the city wife. And then I had uh, the two mothers, uh, the other two mothers uh, who were on the farm. Uh, my dad had never seen the inside of a classroom. You know what it what what it looked like. Uh, my mother was the one that was educated uh, a lot more than my father was. She went right up to standard one. <laughs> uh, so I think the importance of, of of what I'm trying to share with you is just to to try and begin to give you an idea in terms of who did I become and how did I become the person that I bec uh, that I became or the person that I am today. Uh, because I grew up in this environment. My mother got me when she was 41. Uh, she was really looking forward to having me. So when I came around, I mean, she was, she was over the moon. So I was a protected somebody. Uh, I could not, I think the last time I really uh, could say that I was comfortable in, in bathing myself was when I went to boarding school at, at 12 years. My mother would wash me right from, right through, you know. <laughs> Uh, and, and that's how that's how protective the environment was. I was really and truly a mama's boy. Um, uh, uh, my friends say, "Why you never even played sport?" Because I had no time for sport. My only had time to be with my mother and my my, my father, and that was that was me. So in 1976, uh, I was doing let me uh, I was doing standard one, I think. So yeah, I was doing standard one. My father uh, was asked by um, his employers uh, to, to retire. You know, I won't say that he retired. He was asked to retire because he was, he was not so young anymore. So it meant that he had to leave Pine Town and go back to the farm. So what had happened over this time is that we sort of commuted during uh, uh, holidays. We'd go to the farm and join the rest of the family, and then when it's not, and then we'd come back. So when my father retired in 1976, uh, uh, the two of them had the conversation, which uh, I am grateful that my father had this conversation with my mother. So my father said to my mother, I don't want you to come with me. I want you to stay behind. I don't want you to go with me to the farm. Uh, I want you to stay here. Uh, obviously, my mother would be a bit uncomfortable with this conversation, say, what's wrong? You know, have I done anything wrong? And my dad said to him, to her, is that if you come with me, this little one is not going to be able to go to school. Because out of all my siblings, the one, well, the, my siblings that are all, that are in front, the one that went to school went to as far as standard two. So my dad said, if we go and yeah, I, take with, I take you with, uh, uh, with me and the boy, he's also probably going to go just up to standard two. Uh, and for that reason, I don't want you to, to come with me. Stay here. My mother was uncomfortable with this conversation because it meant, uh, how are we going to leave? You know? So what she was doing at that time is that she continued to work uh, uh, at this family. Uh, however, um, uh, when I started school, she decided to stop working. Uh, so that uh, she could give me a wash in the morning so that I can go to school because I didn't know how to do it. I mean, I remember we used to have this uh, uh, plastic basin uh, that we used uh, 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 to, to wash in the morning. So my biggest struggle when I, when I would bath is that I would put one hand to balance and I would wash my face. Uh, and then my mother would say, use both hands. And immediately when I tried to use both hands and lift my other hand, I would fall face 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 flat into the water and it's done. And mother said, no, you can't do this. Let me rather do it for you. <laughs> so then uh, 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 she stopped working. So when my dad left uh, uh, to, go to, um, to go back home, we had no income. You know? But uh, she then decided that she will sell anything and everything that she can f uh, uh, lay her, her hands off so that we, we can leave. Because remember, this was a laborer that was uh, retiring, so there's no retirement. Uh, and those days, uh, uh, Sasa didn't exist, you know. It was uh, when you, you fend for yourself somehow. So my mother sold anything and everything. 
uh, and that's how we, we lived. And then I also uh, uh, joined in the queue and started selling stuff. So my specialty was I used to sell um, uh, chicken heads and chicken feet. Uh, my mother would cook them, and then I will go sell them. Uh, and I had a very, very uh, 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 good art to this because when I'm done, or oh, just before I was done, so I would leave one chicken head and uh, one uh, 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 foot and I'd take this home. And I'd say to my mother, sure, it was really a hard day. You know, I've tried my best, but these two I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. uh, and my mother said, oh, it's okay, you can have them. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so... It was hard. It was tough those days. I mean, it was, it was really, really tough uh, um, uh, uh, as soon as my, my dad was, was out because we would go, sometimes we'd go uh, uh, to bed uh, without any, 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 food, any food. And um, uh, what my father then did, he went home and started sort of uh, uh, some form of farming uh, as much as he can. And then he would send uh, beans to us uh, to sell, you know, to keep this selling thing uh, uh, going so that I could go to school. So trying to uh, 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 move on before I take too much time on this uh, um, is that uh, the, the second thing that happened, you know, so the first thing is obviously my father deciding that he's not going to take uh, 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 us with him to, um, uh, to the farm. And then my mother also had a big decision um, uh, when I reached standard five. She then decided, look, um, I want you to go to boarding school. I uh, don't know where she thought the money was going to come from, but she said, I want you to go to boarding school. So I said, but why would, I, would you want me to go to boarding school? And my, my her, her thinking was that if you don't go to boarding school, you're going to carry on living like this where there's days when you go to bed without food. In boarding school, you will eat every day. So I'm guaranteed that you will eat every day in boarding school. I'd rather you having to uh, uh, go to boarding school. So I went to boarding school. I went to a school called Polela. Um, uh, when the 12, probably uh, my, the best uh, years of my life, the five years that I spent there. The interesting thing about that is that, uh, you know, I was now amongst uh, uh, children that came from families that are far financially superior than uh, uh, my family was. Uh, but I had to fit in, you know, I had to fit in, you know, and play as if uh, I understand what's going on. Uh, and be with them. And there's something that uh, uh, used to fascinate me because the food was amazing. This is what I came here for in, in the first place. <laughs> the food was amazing, but everybody would complain about food. I remember on Tuesdays, <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesdays we used to have uh, 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 this uh, uh, gravy with millet rice, but we had it, it was called Memphis. It was, uh, it was made from dried leaves. Uh, I think only God knows what leaves these were because it was dried leaves, and everybody hated it, and I loved it, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and I would say, sure, Memphis today, and I'm smiling, said, it's all good, it's Memphis, but uh, yeah, so Colella gave me a couple of things, firstly, uh, I could have food every day, but uh, I, was, I was an extremely introverted someone, extremely introverted someone, but this was the first time that uh, I could be on my own away from my mother, and I could interact with, uh, 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 with other children and, 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 and as equals. And, uh, uh, and I think that's where I started coming out. That's where I could now stand and talk to you. I mean, if I hadn't gone to Polila, I doubt that I would be, I would be able to, to do this. Yeah, because, as I said, I was an extremely introverted uh, someone. Yeah, so the one thing about how, how much I've told you so far was that... Um, that is important to share is that when I was in class, right from when I started school, there's one thing that I, I wanted to do is that I would not want anybody to beat me on any subject. So I made sure that every day uh, the top marks were mine, uh, the top uh, student in the class was me, and that's what drove me. Uh, I went to Polela carried on the same, uh, same thing. And that's partly why also I, never, I was never into sport because I'm one of those kids that uh, when two teams are being put together in soccer, you know, they say, uh, you come, you come, you come, you come, you come. And then when I'm left alone, they say, who wants him? Ah, you, can go, you can go on any side <laughs> because my contribution was uh, negligible. You know. So I decided that I'm going to stop play playing sport because I can't be the best. You know, 
I'm not going to do it. Uh, I'll rather stick to my, uh, 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 my, my, my classwork. Yeah. So, polela, uh, schoolwork, great. Food, great. Uh, the two things were working well. First year was fine. Second year, uh, my mother's uh, um, smart plan fell apart because, remember, it was on a Saturday. I don't remember the date, but it was on a Saturday in August. Um, the boarding master came and said, look, uh, you haven't paid for a couple of months now, so this is it. You've got to go home. So I asked a couple of my friends uh, uh, to put together some money for me to go home. So I went home. Uh, got home, uh, threw myself on my bed, uh, on our bed, and said to Mama, you know, uh, that's it. You know, I'm going to try and find work. Uh, I was 13. I'm going to try to find work for the rest of the year. Uh, and then next year, I'll find a school uh, uh, around here so that I can, I can, I can continue. Uh, my mother didn't say a word. She was just quiet. Uh, eventually, uh, I went to bed. She didn't. Woke up uh, at like 4 o'clock in the morning. She's still sitting in the same position that she was uh, when I went to bed. Uh, just thinking. Whole day on Sunday, just thinking. Night on Sunday, she just sat and just thinking. Monday morning, my mother said, look, come, let's go. Where are we going? No, you'll see. So we went, um, and um, we went and got into a taxi, bus, whatever we got into. We went to Pinta. Went into this uh, big building. Uh, still thinking, what's this woman doing now? So we went in. Uh, she wanted to find out where the owner of the business, uh, how to find her, find him. Uh, they said, but who are you? And she said who she was, and nobody was uh, interested in, uh, in showing her where the uh, owner of uh, the building and the business was. Eventually, she said, look, uh, uh, my husband uh, is uh, Kem Dolo. Uh, I want to see uh, the owner of this business. So when that message uh, got to the owner, the owner said, uh, of the business said, no, send her in. So I discovered later that uh, that was my father's old employer. So my mother said, look, I'm um, Zake's wife, and this is Zake's son. He's just been expelled uh, at school because um, we can't afford uh, uh, the fees. Uh, but, you know, he really likes school. And uh, this guy, his name was Mr. Raff, uh, over, took out his checkbook, says, how much is it? He told him the, the amount. He wrote a check, gave me the check, says, uh, go back to school. And from now on, every December, you come here. Uh, I've got a car. Uh, 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 four levels of car parking. You will work there directing cars where they should go. Uh, and when the holidays are finished, come and take your check and take it back to school. You know, so that is how I then finished Bella. You know, that is how I finished. Uh, uh, by the way, you know, you see car guards today. It's fashionable. I'm the original car guard. <laughs> uh, so as, as uh, uh, time went on, so... You know, you start thinking now, what do I want to do when I finish school? So my, my dream, I wanted to be a civil engineer. Uh, that's what I wanted to be, and that's what I was working towards. Uh, 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 I was, uh, my mathematics was, uh, was amazing. My physical science was amazing. So I said, I can do this thing. I'll be an, an electrical engineer. Uh, applied. I got accepted at Vets University. Uh, and then the matter of uh, financing, I uh, applied for a bursary. I, was, uh, uh, I got a bursary uh, uh, from a company called Fandenberg & Jergens. Uh, so it was all good. But then age was ticking on with my mother. When uh, um, it was time to go at, at the beginning of the year, firstly, there was no money for me to go from KZN to come to, to Vets University. And I looked at my mother. I said, this is not good. You know, this woman has really broken her back. Uh, to bring me this far. If I leave and go to Vets University, it would be unfair. So I need to look for something around and most probably go and work so that I can uh, get this woman to, uh, uh, to, to give this woman a rest and then uh, I can look after her. So that was the, the thinking at the time. Uh, but then I saw an advert uh, 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 with a place called the Natal Institute of Immunology uh, uh, they were looking for uh, 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 people that we wanted to do uh, medical laboratory technology. I said, this is it. 
uh, I'll do this. And the nice thing about it is that it came with a stipend. Uh, and the stipend at that time, it was 398 rands a month. So it was, uh, it was a lot of money. It was, uh, it was a lot of money. So I did this. You know, uh, and uh, again, same attitude, same thing that uh, in class, I've got to be the top guy. And, uh, and I was. You know, I didn't just say it. I, del I, I delivered. So did my med tech, finished. Um, and then uh, I asked my mother to retire, obviously, to look after her. Uh, I looked after her uh, uh, from because I lived with her, and then at the end of the month, I also sent 50, 50 rands to my father uh, for, for his own part, and he was very proud. Uh, I believe the first day, uh, the envelope, I don't know, some of Mo Maurice, you'll remember, uh, money those days used to send, them in a, send it in a white envelope, uh, which was for money. So my dad, uh, the first time I sent her this money, there was, he, he was with his friends, uh, and he took out the envelope, you know, which had my name in the front. So he told his friends that, look, my son has sent me money. So it was 50 rands in the envelope, but my dad put another 50 rands and said, send me 100 rands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So even with my dad's uh, uh, friends, I was like, uh, this is a good boy, 100 rands to his father. Yeah, so, <coughs> uh, so that was uh, um, my, my time at... Um, at, uh, at um, you know, getting to that med tech. But what led me to change this is that um, I worked uh, in, a, in, a, in this laboratory. My first laboratory that I worked in was at King Edward Hospital, which was a, a, it's a very big hospital. And when I worked there, uh, my parents loved the, uh, the, the, um, the, the, the uh, laboratory coats, the white laboratory coats that uh, I, I, I brought back from work, you know, they thought, sure, you know, the boy has done so well, you know, he comes with this. <laughs> in, the me in the meantime at work, you know, I'd look at my colleagues around me, uh, and uh, one thing that happened with, the with these guys is that they were very, very proud of what they were doing and uh, how far they've got there. So one would say, you know, I've been here for 25 years, you know, one would say, I've been here for 31 years. I mean, 31 years, I'm going to do this for 31 years. <laughs> I said, no, I can't. I, said, I don't see myself doing this. You know, I enjoyed it at the time, but I'm thinking, not next year, not the year after. No, I'm not going to do it. So I started thinking, what's next? You know? As I was thinking, what's next, uh, uh, again, I saw um, uh, uh, an advertisement, uh, 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 retail, retail uh, management development program. Uh, it was advertised by, by, by Edgar's at the time, which was, uh, you know, like the uh, retail company at the time. So I applied, uh, got in, uh, exciting. Two program was uh, 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 for, for two years where I was going to do this. Uh, but in the first month, in the first month, I got my, my first promotion. Uh, and thereafter, you know, they, they just came. I mean, I was at Edgar's for six years, and in the six years, I'd done six jobs. Very exciting, growing, and really got to understand what retail is about, you know, and I really got uh, to love retail. So here's I as a medical technologist doing retail work, and I, and I really and truly loved it, you know. So that's how I became a retailer. So did that. Uh, and as I said, is that whenever I do work in class, I made sure that I was the best in class. When I started working, uh, I'd also make sure that I'm the best in terms of how, that was my attitude. You know, my, my attitude is that I look around me and say, I want to be the best at this. So the one thing that I want to also share is that in my career, I've never said my next job is going to be that. I focused on the job of today and made sure that this job that I have today, I'll do it to the best of my ability. This job will buy me the next job. And, and, and that has always been my attitude, even today. I don't know what I'm going to do next after this. But all I'm doing is that I'm giving this job all of me. Uh, and then the next job will come uh, uh, to me. I won't look for it. It will come to me because of what I've done today. So, um, um, while working hard at Edgar's, um, uh, at the time, uh, I remember I had a very, very nice job uh, uh, in Newcastle. I was the, uh, the store manager there. Uh, 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 you, know, you know, those
those days we used to, you know, celebrate uh, this story of being the first this and the first that, you know, as the first duck I want to manage that store. So it was exciting for me. Uh, uh, <laughs> I must tell you a story. Um, uh, 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 interestingly, I remember the one time my mother came to visit me when I was running this store. Uh, uh, and in Edgar's those days, we used to have cosmetic counters at the, in the front section of the store. And uh, the ladies that worked there was always, uh, uh, you know, Clarence, and it was always uh, white ladies that, uh, you know, that looked the part. So my mother came to visit me. So she got off the taxi in, uh, uh, in Newcastle in town, uh, came into the store and, uh, uh, and said, uh, you know, who she was. And then she was taken to my office. And uh, so as she was sitting in my office, you know, the people came to, you know, to greet. And, uh, and my mother was sitting there. And this lady was coming, hello, my mother. And my mother said, oh, hello, Messi. <laughs> <laughs> and I would shout, hey. As soon as I said, don't say messes. <laughs> She's not messes. She works for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, I did this. So the reason why I left Edgar's at the time is that uh, I left Edgar's because um, I was overlooked for a job that I knew was mine, uh, a job uh, of a regional manager. It was given to a guy called Headley Angel. Uh, I knew... Uh, and everybody knew that uh, uh, I was a better person than, than Headley Angel. So I said, I'm not going to fight this. I'm not going to argue about it. Um, I'll just leave. So I left. You know, I mean, uh, these days I, I would say to people, don't do it, uh, because uh, I, I've got hindsight, you know, I can look back. But those days, I said, this, they can't do this to me. I left Edgar's and went and joined a company that doesn't exist anymore, a company called Smart Center. Big mistake. You know, uh, because effectively it was like doing a job that I could have done 10 years earlier. But uh, I did it in any case because I got the title that I wanted uh, and did this job um, and it moved me away from Edgar's. Uh, did this for exactly 11 months. Uh, I was regional manager in the Free State, didn't speak Afrikaans, didn't speak Isisutu. So I don't know what I was doing there. Uh, uh, I said I needed to be out. Uh, and at that time, fortunately, uh, I got a call from BP, and I joined BP uh, uh, in the convenience space because that's what they were doing. You know, again, uh, I was BP with uh, BP for about six years. Uh, in that six years, I had uh, four very nice jobs. You know, but uh, the important thing about those jobs is that uh, uh, those four jobs is that those jobs are serving me today. Uh, in my job today because the experience and the insights that I've got there uh, have made me uh, to be able to do this job uh, the best way that I can do. I understand retail, I understand uh, 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 what uh, a business manager, so the people that uh, are in my teams, uh, they can't really, you know, dance around me and, uh, uh, because I know this. I know how it's supposed to be done. I've done it uh, and, uh, and, and I've grown in it. So I was there. Again, same story. I made sure that I, I do it the best way that I can. Uh, and out of, a blue, out of the blue, I got a call uh, 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 from Levi Strauss. They said, look, we need, we're looking for a, a retail regional manager. I joined them. Uh, extremely exciting time. Uh, that's one company uh, where I started understanding what uh, values are, because that's what we spoke about. We spoke about you don't employ children. Uh, 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 to come and, uh, and do uh, 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 any job. So in the factories that we have throughout the world, you know, at that time it was fashionable for companies in the East to employ children. Uh, child labor was, was tried, but uh, uh, Levi Strauss was a, a, a value-based uh, organization. And a lot of what they were speaking about uh, resonated with me. So I did a lot of growing from uh, an understanding what value-based leadership is all about. Uh, and really, it was an, a time when I, when I grew in my leadership journey. You know, so what I'm not talking about at the moment is that while doing all of these things, uh, my focus was uh, make sure that I work hard, but also make sure that if there's any developmental programs that the company offered, I'd be the one, the first one to jump in. So I made sure that I, I grow and, uh, and and really learn and really enhance uh, 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 my leadership. So, and, and my focus has been on leadership. 
Uh, and my focus has been on leadership because that's the space that I, for whatever reason, I thought worked for me. You know, I thought when I w am given the role of, uh, of leading people, uh, I tended to, to do it okay. You know, I, I found that people responded to, to what I was about. I found that people responded and, 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 uh, and we worked well as teams. Uh, and yeah, so I was at Levi Strauss for about four years or so. Uh, and then, then again, out of the blue, unexpectedly, uh, uh, got a call from A.D. Spitz uh, to come and head up their, uh, um, uh, their stores. So I went there. This was an operation of uh, uh, 28 family-owned uh, 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 business at the time. I joined them. Uh, and one of the drivers uh, that I had at the time was around... Uh, just the general standards uh, uh, that a company, that a store should have. I was very focused on that. I was very focused to uplift the standards. I was very focused on making sure that the teams and the people that worked for me understand that you have to deliver the best standard, the best customer service. Uh, I mean, I used to make uh, 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 my teams uh, uh, shine the stockroom floors, and the guys would say, but nobody sees them. I said, it's not about wh who sees them. It's about what we stand for. Don't focus all the time on what people see you doing. You know, the most important things is the things that you do when nobody's watching. You know, and, and that's what drove us. Uh, 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 and uh, in the time, I was, I was, I was uh, at uh, 80 Spitz for, for eight years. And because of this focus on standards, this, because of this focus on, uh, on, on customers, because of this focus on the people that I led, you know, to make sure that uh, I look after them, I nurture them, and... Uh, uh, and uh, I feel as part of the team. Because of that, for six of the eight years, uh, AD Speeds was voted the best footwear company in the country. Uh, and the results were absolutely phenomenal. Uh, we grew that company from 28 stores when I, when I joined. By the time I left, uh, eight years later, we had over 100 stores. At the same time, we had started a, 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 a different chain uh, uh, that we started uh, just uh, as, uh, as uh, three uh, members of the leadership team when we sat around, sat around and said, what else can we do to grow this, uh, this port? And we started a, a, a clothing chain, you know. So really uh, exciting times and really uh, 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 humbling to, to be going through those experiences. And, 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 and through all these experiences, my one thing that I focus on is that can I be the best that I can be? Can my team members be the best that they, can, they could be? Can I support them the best way that I can? Uh, to always be available, to always uh, 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 understand that uh, it's just a title that I've been given by the bosses. But at the end of the day, we're all doing the same thing. We all are here to serve customers. We're all wanting the best for the company. And that's what we drove. So I did that job. Um, again, trying to be the best that we can be. I can be trying to really uh, uh, deliver on, uh, uh, on, on great results that the company wanted. And um, still today, I don't understand uh, how I got the call. Uh, it was a, a, a woman called, uh, um, uh, I think her name was, uh, her name was Van Pluen from the Netherlands. She called me and said, um, you know, I've got this job. And I said, I'm not in the market. I'm not looking. I'm very happy with what I'm doing. I'm very happy with that. And I said, no, but this job, uh, just think about it. I said, I'm not interested. You know, as it goes, you know, these conversations happen. And then eventually I said, I'll listen. You know, eventually, you know, I got to know that uh, this was Shell. Uh, I said, I'd left that industry. Uh, I really didn't want to go back there. But... Uh,
um, there's hope for, for a lot of us. You know, I that came that come from a, an, an extremely uh, um, humble background. You know, I had the opportunities uh, uh, by doing the way the things the way that I've done them to to get here. You know, so if I can do it, so many people can also do it. You know, uh, it is also uh, uh, for me to say to you: it's it's not only the people that have gone to private schools. Uh, that will get uh, uh, to do these roles that we are fortunate to have today. But uh, anybody, if you are focused and say, you want to do it, you can do it. You know, one of the things that I, I, I also just want to share that, 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 that drove me, and I, I shared this with someone about, about a year ago at, uh, at Shell, is that I've never in my almost 30 years of working, uh, have never asked for a promotion. I've never, ever asked for a, an increase. Uh, whatever I get given as a salary, um, I take it. Because for me, whatever I've been able to be given as a salary and, 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 and the perks and the, and the bonuses, it was so much better than where I come from. You know, so if it's so much better than I, where I come from, why would I be fighting for, for, for so much more? You know? I, I, I struggle sometimes uh, 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 with what I call, and, and, and forgive me when I say this, I struggle sometimes uh, when I see the greed that uh, we've developed as a people. You know, you, 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 you've got the opportunity. A lot of people don't have jobs. A lot of people don't have uh, the luxury of doing the leadership positions that we have. But we still say, can I have another million? You already got a million or two or three. You still want another million. Yet somebody else somewhere is getting by with 10,000 rands. But this thing of saying that I, I deserve more, I've, 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 I've been fortunate that I've, I've, I'm not wired like that. And it comes from, and the reason why I shared who, who I am from, uh, from the background, that informed that, that uh, the little that I have will get me by. And on top of that, I just have to work as hard as I can to get the next uh, 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 increase, to get the next job, to, to get better. So the better is not going to come from me asking for better. The better is going to come from me by doing the best that I can today. Then the better will come. So yeah, uh, I'm at Shell. I work with wonderful people. I see one or two of them here. Um, yeah, it's, it's an exciting journey for me. I'm, I'm, I never thought, you know, I, I, said, uh, I said to someone the, the other day that I think I'm my parents' wildest dream. Because I don't think my father would have thought that I, I would get here. <laughs> so maybe if I go towards the end of this, um, I'll just share what I've, I've, I've looked at and I think has worked for me. So I've always reflected and say, how you lead is determined by how you show up. Uh, I have grown and enjoyed myself under leaders who are gentle. I've grown a lot under leaders who took an interest in me. So I've tried to take an interest in people that I work with because I know what it feels like. So think about it for yourself, is that the things that you want from a leader, how do you become that? Why do you want your leader to show up in a particular way, but then when you become a leader, you show in a different way? So the things that you are looking for in a leader, demonstrate them with the people that you lead. Because that, at the end of the day, is what will make people comfortable you with the lead, as, as, as their leader. So for me, that's, that, that's been important. I've worked from some, for some amazing leaders. I've worked, I've worked for people that have really... Uh, 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 nurtured me, that looked at me as a human being. I remember uh, when I was at Edgar's, I used to work for this guy called Kevin Marsh. He used to irritate the living daylights out of me because how that environment works is that if, uh, if uh, the big boss is coming, you know, we'd all be on our knees uh, with uh, a, a, a steel wool, making sure that we shine every corner because when he comes, you know, you know he wants the floors shining like that. So 
when Kevin Marsh came to, to, for a store visit, which was like once probably every four months or once every six months, you know, we'd have done that the night before. The floor will be shining out. Know my numbers uh, 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 like no one's business uh, uh, in my head, and I'll know everything about my business. I'll, uh, and I'll be ready. And then Kevin Marsh will come in, in my office, and then he'll tell me about the house that he's just bought. Uh, he'll, he'll talk to me about the house that he's just bought, and then eventually I got really fed up with him, and I said to him, "Look, Kevin." You know, when you come here, it's very stressful. So the time that you waste telling me about the houses that you've bought and this and this, I mean, it's, it's, it's unfair on me because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking out here thinking, what are you going to find that I've done wrong in, in this? Story? And then Kevin said to me, listen, dude, when I talk to you about the houses I've bought, it's is because I want you to think about these things. It is not only sufficient for me to look at how much you understand the business and how much you know it and how you are delivering, but I'm also interested in terms of who you become in your personal space. You understand how the financials uh, uh, work and you understand how it's done. So I, I stopped and, and really took this seriously. So this guy looks at me holistically. I also work for another guy, Robert Lund, that I work for. Amazing guy, you know. He taught me how to drink wine. You know, I drink wine now. <laughs> you know. So I mean, but 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 importantly, it's someone that really, really, really cared. I mean, uh, 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 and and took an interest. You know, uh, and and when when we spoke about my children, uh, by the way, I've got six of them. Uh, when we spoke about my children, he he asked their names, and uh, and and when he spoke about them again, he would refer to them by name. You know. Uh, because that's how much interested he was in me. And I've found that working for leaders like that, uh, for me, uh, it gives me the opportunity to grow. You know, it, 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 it allows me to, to know that I've, this guy's got my back. Uh, even if I do do something wrong, I can go to him and say, listen here, dude, I've stuffed up here. How do we fix it? Uh, because he cares, because he, it, he looks at me as a human being. He wants me to succeed. So that's, that's the, the, the other reflection that I've had, that um, um, uh, work for or become the leader that uh, you, you, you want. Be the person that, you know, show what, 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 what talks to you. And don't just say it. Show up and, 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 and be that. The second reflection, I've spoken about it quite a bit, uh, but I just want to put it out there, is that the second reflection that I have uh, that I want to share is that hard work pays. Uh, I saw this uh, with my parents. Uh, they were able to, you know, my, my, my father, uh, he was ex an extreme hard work. I mean, uh, I remember, uh, uh, I remember the one uh, uh, morning uh, in particular uh, because he used to wake up. My, my father had a, had a big voice, and uh, when he shouts our names as boys, we would, would We'd be flying, you know, we'd have our, our shorts in our hands and we, we, we dress as we go along because my dad would say, and he only said, uh, uh, Convizo, what time is this? And you know, we've got to be out and we'd be going to work. So I remember this one day, for whatever reason, I don't know whether his watch had played up or whatever, but we were out in the fields uh, plowing at 2 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> you know, uh, but that's who he was. You know, he was, he was an extreme hard worker. You know, sometimes, I mean, my, 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 my current uh, uh, roles, I've got three roles at work, and uh, sometimes my colleagues ask me, but how do you do it? You know, but for me, it's, it's what I know. That's how I grew up. You know, you know hard work, you know, is, is important. You know, hard work pays. So for me, I just want to share with you that hard work really, really pays. Don't expect that you will progress by just asking. Do it. Work hard, and uh, the rewards will come. The rewards will come to you. Don't go looking for the rewards. The rewards will look for you. The, the one thing, the other thing that I just want to, to share with you uh, that uh, I've seen is that when, when we were growing up, we used to look at people that are extroverts, you know, extroverted, and people that, uh, you know, are out there. And that's the, 
that's the view of, of a leader that we have. You know, the people that speak loud and are energetic and they, you know, we, we thought that's how a leader should be, you know. But for me, it's not like that because I'm not that. I'm not extroverted. So I respond better uh, to humility. I respond better to people that uh, look at me as a human being and say, we are in this together. Let's face the same direction. Let's move. If you can't do this, uh, this is how it's done. If you can't do this, ask me. I'll show you. So humility for me goes a long way uh, in terms of leading people, in terms of understanding what your people need, how to support them, and how to make sure that uh, uh, you give them the opportunity to grow. So that's, that, that's the third thing. The one big one for me, uh, 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 and I hope, uh, because this is how I look at things, is, uh, uh, and I hope what I think of and what I see in, in my head, I hope it is true. One big one for me is authenticity. Uh, be genuine. Be yourself. Don't put it on. Because if you put it on, people will see through you. You can't put it on all the time. You can't fake it all the time. You can fake it for most of the time, but in difficult times, people will see through you. So the one thing that will really and truly serve you is yourself. Be you. Lead people by being yourself. And I've tried. Uh, maybe sometimes I don't fit, but I try to be myself. I've tried to be genuine. I've tried to be straight. I've tried to be simple. Uh, the people that I work with, they will tell you that even when I speak to my teams, when I speak within the organization, because I never went to private school, uh, I'm a product of Bantu education, I speak with the simple language that I hope people can understand. I don't try and put it on to sound fancy. I don't try and put it on to sound smart. You know, I speak it the way that I see it, the way that I understand it, because I'm hoping by doing that, the people that I work with can understand me better. I ask questions. The things that I don't know, I try and ask around with, from the people that know. I also surround myself with people that know. I surround myself with people that are a lot smarter than I am and people that are experts in the areas uh, that are important. It is not going to come from me. It's going to come from the smarter people that are around me. And then by that, we'll deliver. And I enjoy the glory with them as we succeed. So humility is... Uh, is a big one for me. So, yeah, that's, that's my story. That's, that's uh, all that I thought I would share. Uh, there's no frills. Uh, uh, I've been really uh, been fortunate uh, to be able to go through the journey that I've gone through. Uh, and I've really been fortunate uh, to have uh, the leaders that, that, that I've worked for who have held me by the hand and showed me how it's done. And I'm really fortunate to be here. And uh, I, I look forward to the next, uh, I don't know however long that uh, 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 I still have uh, uh, to work. And uh, lastly, uh, because uh, 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 Maurice has already said uh, to the woman that uh, uh, in, in, his, in, in her house I live, uh, thank you uh, uh, for the support and uh, uh, thank you for the guidance and thank you for for keeping me honest and making sure that I, I know that I have to come home every night uh, 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 and be who I am. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you, so much. Thank you so much. Let's give him another round of applause. I think we can do better than that. Thank you so much. Powerful presentation, genuine, authentic, unambiguous presentation uh, from uh, KZN, the only province with the same name. Yeah, now to Santin, to, to be the, the chair of chairs. Not just a chair, a chair of chairs. Uh, powerful story. Thank you for sharing your story. It, it came from the heart. Yeah, now we felt it as we were sitting there. It was not bookish. It was not theory. It was experiential. It was mind and destiny shifting. And much appreciated. Let's give him another round of applause. I think we can do better than that. inspired. But this is inspiration on steroids. On you know.
You're not going to get another inspiration. This is on your open. And the day about the good burning is very well known, Pumala. It's on steroids. Um, I'm going to take questions. And please just be succinct, straight to the point. Don't repeat what he said. Besima mele soonke. Nambenge lana, please. Age ko pumid. Soonke meze la. Don't say, you're born with te. I see as with te. Just go, be a sniper. Don't be a bank robber. Utubula wongkumun. Just be a sniper. Yeah, now, just focus, be succinct, straight to the point, so we can give opportunity to as many people as possible. Because this is the only opportunity that he has to come and speak to us as young professionals, as young entrepreneurs, executives, and thought leaders. Uh, are we all together? Otherwise, we're going to go Facebook, okay? Yeah, now, uh, any question? Three questions at a time, and then we're going to allow the chair you know, to uh, respond, take another one. And then Mr. Sevala Lezuzu. Three questions. One Kala Khutmane, you are noted. My sister, you are noted. My sister, you are noted. In that one, then we are Khutman. My sister, in my mind, I'm going to go to school. Lana Gupoti, Gusi Singale, and then Gusi Singap. Okay. Nizuela, I'm going to go to the ULP. Straight to the point, yeah. Uh, good evening, everybody. Is it three questions per person, or is it. <laughs> I've got three. They are interlinked, though. Okay. <laughs> Question number one to three is, as a leader, you are bound to come across characters that challenge your leadership. How do you deal with that? Question number two, uh, a CSI program as an individual, uh, by CSI I mean mentoring, for a person who is in your level, you would get too many requests for mentoring people. How do you cipher who is genuine, who is authentic? And then three, Shell has got a dealer program where they develop people who want to become dealers. How do we get to introduce this in the communities where we can develop our own people? Thank you. Quite a very emotional journey that you went through, but it is a reflection of um, a very strong character trait of somebody who is uh, among the people that you are leading that you have it all together. On the days that all is not going so well, who do you go to? Who do you draw strength from? Um, my question is kind of also linked to the lady here. I wanted to ask, um, you mentioned in your journey that you were privileged enough to be in an environment where people recognized you and recognized you holistically. Not everyone in corporate South Africa is privileged to be in that environment. How do you deal with it when you are in, in an environment where people don't recognize you holistically? Uh, just for example, you mentioned Uguti, looking at back at the Edgars in Newcastle, you wouldn't have gone, you wouldn't have left. How would you have dealt with the situation better? Mr. Mdolo, you can respond. Is it yes for you? It's yes for me. You know, the, the, the church is a, you, you can respond. You can come here or you want to sit there? You can. Yeah, it's up to it's a right up to you. Okay. The, the, the mic is, is good now. Eh? Yes, yes. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll start uh, with the, the third question. Uh, when you don't get recognition, I think when you don't get recognition, uh, uh, my my reflection is that, uh, for instance, if I look back to my uh, uh, what I was not happy about at Edgars, is that uh, that particular one, you know, I had lost it. Uh, I should have asked myself, or, or, or the, the advisors asked myself, how do I make sure that I show up differently so that I get the, 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 the recognition that I thought I deserved? Because remember, when, when, when you are playing uh, uh, and uh, uh, people are watching, 
you play in a way that you think this is the best way that will get recognition. But if people don't, don't recognize that, you've got to sort of look back. Don't, don't start with blaming other people. Start here. What can I do differently that will make me uh, get the recognition? What do the people that are looking, what is it that they are looking for? And make sure that the things that they are looking for, you focus on them and you amplify them and you make sure that they get what they are looking for. Because remember, uh, the, the, game, the, the game is not measured by you. It's measured by the people that are looking at you. So how do I make sure that what I do resonates with what they are looking for? Okay. And then maybe go to uh, 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 the second question. Uh, who do you, who do you uh, go to when the chips are down? I think a as a person, as a human being, it is, it is good that you surround yourself with people that you can trust. You surround yourself with people that you know that whatever I it is that uh, you say to them, uh, they will be honest with you in giving you feedback, but also they will play the role of making sure that they don't push you down even further. They also don't look at you and see that because you are down today, it's a weakness. You can be, you can be open and honest with them. So surround yourself with those people. So I'll try to have people like that. I try to have people that I can go to, but also uh, uh, at home, I've got a friend that I talk to about anything and everything. And uh, when I do get home, uh, I do share and say, this is what's happened. And sometimes she just listens and says nothing. But that listening for me is very helpful because I get to, you know, to let it out. You know, it's, it's, it's an outlet, it's an opportunity for me just to vent. Uh, and then she, she, you know, she listens and, uh, and, and, and reflects on it. If she's got views on it, she gives me her views. But also from, from colleagues and friends, I've got people that I, I look to and say, this is what I faced. How do you think I could have, I could have handled this? But a lot of it also uh, has to be in here. You've got to be able also to self-motivate. You've got to be able also, when things are really, really bad, throw from, from within and say, yes, it's happened. You know, how do I, how do I stand up? I mean, uh, the, there's the, the adage that we all know is that the, 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 the real measurement of someone is how many times you fall, but more importantly, how many times do you get up? And the get up, getting up, you don't only need somebody to, to, to lift you up. There's a lot of it that's gonna come from you when you say, it's happened. <laughs> uh, 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 the other thing is that uh, uh, um, uh, uh, my, my sister used to tell me a story uh, that uh, uh, her sister-in-law, whom they were not the greatest of buddies, but uh, 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 the sister-in-law used to say to my sister, uh, my, my brother-in-law uh, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was the kind of guy that had, uh, you know, not three or four, uh, but like five or six. Uh, women uh, at any one at one time. So my sister would say, uh, uh, my, sister, my sister's sister-in-law would say to her is that, you know, sometimes you are walking in town and you feel down and you see this woman and you know that this woman uh, is dating your husband. You can't afford to let her see you uh, that you are depressed by the situation. You've got to bring it in, you know, look up to her and, 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 and walk tall and as soon as she passes, you can say, oh. <laughs> but, 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 when, but when you face him, hey, you've got, you've, you've, got to, you've got to try and find the strength from within to carry you through because you don't want the enemy to see you in a bad place. So a lot of it is going to come from, from within. But more importantly, have people, surround yourself with people that you trust, people that whatever they say, you can believe. You know, that is important. So the... One, three questions. Uh, you, you, you spoke about uh, 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 challenge, challenging leaders, uh, where you feel challenged with uh, uh, the, the, the leaders that you, pardon? That the, the challenge you, 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 your leadership. Yeah, so, so 
my, my attitude towards life is that it's not about you. So every, it's not everything is about you. So you've got subordinates that are challenging you from where you stand. The first thing that you should try and do, understand where does this come from? What drives this? Can I show up differently uh, to this person because they are driven by this, this, and that? But also, more importantly, is conversations. You've got to be able to look, to look someone in the eye and say, look, I don't think this relationship is working. What is it that you want from me for this relationship to work? Because once you've done that, it gives you permission for you also to say, but okay, I hear you, you, uh, uh, you need me to do this for this to work, but I also need you to show up this way for the relationship to work. Because relationships are never one-sided. It's got to go both ways. So sometimes you look at, 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 at someone and they are challenging you. Uh, are you doing everything correctly? Are you doing the best that you can do? So take the opportunity to ask them, what, do you, what is it that you want from me? Because that gives you the, the uh, permission to say, now that you've told me, I will meet you this far, but I also want this from you to try and get to a relationship that works. Uh, requests. Requests are a big challenge. You know, there's a, there's a lot of people, but there's a lot of people out there that, that need support, that want, that want uh, 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 your time. Firstly, you need to understand you can't say yes to everyone and everybody because you'll kill yourself. But also, more importantly, you will not be doing justice in terms of how you support the people that you, you, you are supporting if you are spreading yourself too wide. So you've got to be able to say no to some people. Refer them somewhere else. Say, maybe this person will do a better job. However, in terms of who deserves the most, that's again from a conversation. You need to be able to measure what does this person want? Am I good at this? Can I really give value to this person or not? But more importantly, don't overload yourself because we also try to be nice. Being nice doesn't really pay anybody because the person that you are supporting doesn't get full value, but also you killing yourself. The jobs that we do, uh, the roles that we have, need a lot of you. So you can't then afford to really spend yourself doing other things, which are important, and, uh, and, and spread yourself so widely that you can't do what people admire in you. So you're not delivering in that because you've taken this energy and you've done other things with it. You need this energy to be able to do stuff that people uh, uh, love about you. So preserve it. Your third question was uh, dealer program, how do we... Just, just say that again, because... I'm apologizing to your MC for this is a bit hard to pick up on, but I know you see Shell has got a lab development program yeah. where they take the students and put them into certain places. Yeah. Uh, for example, yeah. they are developing one in Lavi for China. Uh, okay. if, if it's the first lab, you can wrap it for now. No, it's a relevant question, and I'm glad you asked it. Uh, so. If you go to our website, uh, you go to the careers section. Uh, in the careers section, there is a, 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 a icon there that says a, 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 a franchise, franchise opportunities. So you go there, you apply, we take you through the process. Yeah. So it's very easy. It's very, it's very easy and it's very simple. And we are, we, I mean, it's, it's, some, it's, it's, it's a program that we are very, very proud of, and we're really making a lot of progress. Uh, uh, this year alone, We've, uh, we've managed to appoint, no, not this year alone, in, in the last 18 months, we've managed to appoint 51 uh, 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 aspiring uh, 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 entrepreneurs that we've put into our program, and we are looking at placing them at service stations as we go along. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Let's take the last, the last one. My brother, you are noted. My brother, you are noted. Two of you. My sister, you are noted. Uh, and then get a decider or a uh, My question is simple. 
in your leadership role, how did you deal with failure and disappointment? And then my sister there. Um, I'm going to be very brief, try and create a bit of context to the question itself. So the context is that we are millennials growing up under a different type of era, if I can call it that, where we've had opportunities and so forth. But we're struggling to get those uh, access to those opportunities. Um, and people are telling us you need to be more patient. But uh, when you're continuously being overlooked and so forth, what, are, what would you say to the millennial, the black millennial generation? And I'm, tr I'm not trying to be controversial, just calling a spade a spade. Firstly, thank you so much for an incredible uh, talk today and the inspiring words you've you've said to us today. My name is Malibongwe, and my question is, can you recommend at least three books that you have read or know of that uh, for those interested in the oil industry that can refer to um, for general success, career-wise, and for personal motivation? Thank you. <coughs> Let's take another two. I think now I can open it then. There at the back, oh. There at the back, and then uh, and then my brother there. Yeah, let's take. Okay, yeah, I got on a good man there, and then come to. This is what I say. So I would see a career. Hey, son, what man? Uh, my brother, hey, you echoed my sentiment. Yeah. Baba, we tired of electives. Yeah. And we've said this before. Why aren't there programs for entrepreneurship? <coughs> so what are you doing as a person, not as a leader or a chef, as a moon, to cultivate the type of entrepreneurship? I think I'm going to decide whether we're taking another two. Uh, um, good evening. My name is Kosi. Um, I'd like to thank uh, our speaker, Ukutu Mitolo, for giving us insight about, our, about your life and your journey to get to where you are. Uh, one of the key things you highlighted is that you found value in your career once you worked for a company that put values at the core of their objectives rather than a company that is profit orientated. Right, so uh, with regards to that, um, I'm looking at the fact that Shell is uh, one of the largest uh, drivers in the oil industry and pulls power. Right, we still are to expect uh, increases in the oil price, increases we've never seen so rapidly happening. And it would be naive of us to do not expect uh, strikes at the end of the year and the beginning of next year, taking into account the fact that there is election year next year and those uh, strikes are going to affect profits. Right, so when Shell wants to increase their profits, they do a game analysis where they study competition to exploit weaknesses to expand their process, their, their profits. Right, so um, what strategies are put into perspective to try and curb the, the the increases? If you can, if you can implement strategies to increase your profits, I'd like to believe you can implement uh, strategies to try and increase your situation. Tiavi, <laughs> Baba Mtono, la. Spetama entrepreneurs, spetama professor, I'm academics, I'm activist, I'm a professional, I'm a professional, it's a mix bag. Onko muntu represent it, I guess, uh, you know, after I've said that, we'll allow, we'll allow the chair of chairs to reply to all your questions. If I miss it, we're gonna, if you and I will take it upon our shoulders, to reply on social media. Yeah. Um, but he's going to reply. And then, Chair, when you're done replying, if you can give us your vote of thanks, not a vote, sorry, your closing remarks, and then I'll come back and do the announcement and introduce the Chair. Let's give, uh, let's give Mr. Mtola a, a round of applause <laughs> as he replies.
So um, there was a question in terms of uh, how, in my journey, I've dealt with failures and disappointments. Uh, those are inevitable. Uh, you will get disappointed. There will be things that, do, that don't go right. Again, uh, it is about that digging deep. That is about that finding within you in terms of how do you, how do you deal with it personally. But I think the, the, the important things about failure uh, or things that disappoint you is to understand that it will happen. So when it happens, it's not the end of the world. When it happens, it's happening to you, it's happening with, with everybody else, but what is it that can change the situation? What is it that you can do that changes that situation that you see as a failure? You know, failure is not the end of the world. It is again about that notion of uh, I'm down, I need to get up. So find strength within yourself to make sure that you do get up. You know, don't, don't let failure defeat you. Don't let failure defeat you. You, you. you have been successful. So don't measure yourself by that one failure. Measure yourself by the successes. You know, I've had so many successes. So if uh, there's a wobble, it's a wobble. You know, we can fix it. But focus on what tomorrow holds. Face up to it. Disappointments will come. Life is not perfect. Okay. Uh, you asked about the books that uh, I would recommend. Uh, I, my favorite books, they don't talk to oil and gas. They, they're just a, a, a favorite books that uh, uh, you know, I, I, I have read and uh, sort of enjoyed. Uh, one of them is uh, a, a book called uh, Good to Great. Yep. Uh, it's a wonderful book. Uh, 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 the sort of the, the concepts that are reflected there uh, is concepts that uh, really can help you to grow. Uh, the other book uh, is a book uh, by a guy called uh, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, Tipping Point. Uh, it's also a book that uh, I've read and enjoyed. Uh, the other book, uh, it's a bit of a, a thickish book uh, 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 by a gentleman called John Maxwell, yeah. and it is The Five Levels of Leadership. Yeah. Yeah. So those are books that uh, really uh, 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 have uh, uh, spoken to me uh, in the past. Um, the other question that came through is that... Uh, we are struggling to get opportunities. Uh, I think saying be patient is, is a difficult one because how patient is patient, you know? So the one thing uh, 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 that um, I would recommend is don't be focused on looking for opportunities in one area. If those opportunities don't come, what is it that is different that I can look at that might give me the opportunity? Um, uh, I was talking to a young man who is desperately looking for a job. He uh, is a, a, a marketing graduate, become marketing graduate. He's worked a little bit and uh, things didn't go well. And he's just struggling now to, to get employment. So the question that I asked him is that, firstly, you are a BCom graduate. So have you thought about spending some time doing your honors degree, if you are able to? But also, have you considered uh, looking at starting a business instead of just continuously looking for a marketing job? But also, what I would recommend is that don't just look at, if you're a marketing graduate, look for opportunities in the marketing space. What else can I do that is probably different to what I set out at the beginning wanting to do? Where, where are the openings? I mean, I, 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 mean I, I, I shared with you that my dream was to be a civil engineer. I never got there. 
you know. But I said, what is it that is available? And that, uh, that was available. I did it. I, it didn't take me to where I wanted to go, but it was a good stopgap at the time. And then eventually I found my place and did what I, I was doing. I'm never going to be a civil engineer. So be it. But at least I found a home in what I'm doing today. So don't just look at one area. Look as widely as you can. Something will give. And don't give up easily. Your opportunity will come. So um, the gentleman at the back uh, also said, uh, what are we doing to cultivate the, the culture of entrepreneurship? I think, I think it's something that is important because there aren't enough companies to employ all of us. There aren't enough uh, jobs to job all of us. So entrepreneurship is one area because remember that if you start a business, you have the opportunity to create jobs. So it's no longer about the one job that you are looking for. Your gives opportunity to many more people that will come into, into that. So uh, entrepreneurship is something that we encourage, is something that we are constantly looking, how can we make a contribution? Uh, today, uh, 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 in the company that uh, I work for, we had an amazing day where we were celebrating uh, entrepreneurs that we've contributed to them kicking off their businesses. It was a humbling experience where we were in a room full of people uh, one lady stood up and said, when she started her business, she was a one-woman show. Today, her business has 17 people. So find people also that you can talk to and say, can we do this together to create opportunities, opportunities to start businesses? Ask other people. We've got programs, and we're not the only company. We've got programs where uh, we've got something that's called LiveWire, which is a program that enables uh, 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 Go to these programs with as many organizations that, uh, that are out there to try find the opportunity to, to get your business started. Um, the last question, which is a, is a, is a difficult question, um, uh, what, stress, what strategies do we have? Because we've got strategies uh, to increase our profits, uh, what strategies do we have to, to reduce prices? You know? Unfortunately, if you look at the, the particular area that you, you are talking about at the moment, is that it is a little bit beyond our control. Uh, it is uh, uh, something that uh, the, the world economy drives. Uh, because uh, uh, there's this organization called OPEP uh, 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 and other nations. They drive uh, the price of, uh, of crude because their nations uh, depend on it. Uh, and they decide, you know, if a barrel of Brent crude, for instance, is at $60 per barrel, are we able to, be ab uh, to pay uh, our way out? Are we able to, to make our economy run? So if we are not able to, what is it that we can do? Can we meet with other uh, uh, nations that produce oil and decide uh, to produce more oil? or we produce less oil. And from less oil being available, the price decides where to go. Okay. So I hope I've answered you. <laughs> so, and then uh, uh, the closing, my, my closing remarks, you know. Firstly is uh, 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 thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you very much, Maurice. Thank you. I really and truly appreciate uh, the opportunity to be here. And thanks for everybody for taking the time out to come and listen to me. Uh, it is really a, a, a privilege uh, uh, to be able to, to, to do that. Uh, and one thing I, I, I spoke about uh, earlier on today during lunchtime is that, unfortunately, as a nation, we are developing certain reputations. And some of the reputations that we are developing and not comfortable reputations. Uh, reputations like 
we are beginning to be known as a corrupt country. So, and, and that reputation doesn't come on its own. It comes from the actions that we as individuals do. It comes from this greed that I spoke about earlier on, that people, we all want to be Patrice. We can't all be Patrice. Let's try and do business in a way and in a manner that is ethical. Have a business conversation uh, that you can have in front of anybody. Don't have a conversation that if somebody finds out that you've had this conversation, you will be not so, su such a, a good person or such a popular person. Uh, 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 leadership and ethical behavior is something that we are continuously eroding in our nation. And don't be one of those. And it is not about uh, you uh, 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 or, or knowing that somebody else, it's, it's about you as an individual. If we all as individuals <laughs> commit to staying away from this, it will spread. And our reputation of being corrupt will start going south. So it is my plea to all of us that let's try and stand up for, for, for the good. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Let's give Chair a round of applause. Powerful stuff. I think we can do better than that. Let's give Chair a round of applause. Thank you so much. But also to extend our gratitude to Mem Dolo. Uh, Mem Dolo, thank you so ever much. And, uh, Mrs. Mdolo is that side. Mem Chaba, because everybody behind every successful man. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. I was just sharing to her that uh, she does that role very well, you know. I can't wait every Sunday at, I think it's 8. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. Uh, I say I'm announcement. Let's take a commercial break. Okay, guys, I think I've announced this. This is the second installment of the summit. We have done it last year, packed to capacity. Yeah, now this is backed by popular demands, and we are saying if you are a woman in, mine, uh, sorry, in oil and gas, you are aspiring, you want to play a role in that space, you're looking for opportunities, new trends, best practices, you want to interact, interface, cross-pollinate, whatever that you want to do with other women, make sure you are here. Ah, uh, the big reverend. Uh, we're hosting our game the 2nd of uh, August. Um, yeah, that is back again by a popular demand. A uh, powerful speaker, impec impeccable individual. He's here again to talk. Remember, Maga, the first time when he came, it was before yeah, he prophesied. Now he's here to confirm the prophecy. You remember, he, he made some prophetic uh, remarks, uh, and 80% of those came to pass. Um, you know, I think 100% of them, you know. Uh, they came to pass. Uh, and then we're doing the val. Uh, in my midst, uh, there's a lady that said, Ponso Chakwane, we work together at Empowerworks. Empowerworks is an events and communication firm that works closely with ULP. We adopted by Babu Morris, uh, you know, who makes sure that, uh, you know, we grow, we solid as a business. And I now work with Ponso. Ponso heads what we call special events. And part of the events that we run, we run leadership, youth, empower women. And we're doing something that is called, uh, you know, 360 High Impact Leadership Summit. We have the premier, we have, uh, you know, the 360 CEO, Obabu Kandani, and other leaders. We've been doing this for the past four years in the Val, but in Santin, we've been doing this for the past 10 years. Uh, the other one that is coming, ah, we're honoring Umamu Felicia. Yeah, I think some of you... We're doing something called the Houting High Impact Leadership Summit where we're honoring Omamu Felicia uh, Mabuza Sakle. Last year, we honored, um, you know, Dr. Richard Maponya. This year, we're honoring, you know, Felicia Mabuza. We have various speakers. The premier is a keynote. Omamu Tuli Madonzela was with her yesterday. She's coming to talk. 
and, and, and Mr. Mtolo, what we are saying about corruption, Obama and Mtolo are saying the same thing, that no one wakes up and says, I want to be corrupt. You know, and she was saying that, you know, these are the small things that you make, you know, you get a free suit. He said, corruption is for those freebies. And we're saying to, to us that, have you seen when we, are, when, we are, when we are poor? No one offers you suits. But when we had a chair of shell, uh, can get a suit out here, man. And she was saying that the best thing to do is declare those suits and leverage on that to say, you know, this suit in Itologuma Caesar from Empower Works. So at the time when I come, and then we can say, ah, there's nothing I can do, you know, to give you any deal because, you know, because they said no one wakes up and say, I want my junk, but over corrupt you by the No, no one does that. But we're doing this for, you know, for Felicia. It's, it's at, uh, at, at um, um, a social theater. Make sure that you talk to, you know, Ponzo, you know, RSVP. It's uh, 450 people. We work with, we'll be having SABC3. You know, we're uh, ULPs, our partner, and other partners. It's a, it's a jam-packed. And then we have um, Seth Palaz. I think most of us will know. Yeah, I know that... Um, some of the guys that, you know, uh, blow over Vuzela about, uh, you know, Seth in terms of their contribution about Tico Thomas, when they started the first black-owned BMW, you know, uh, you know dealership, uh, is a man that has contributed immensely, you know, to, to black entrepreneurs. Um, no, no, that's it. And then make sure that, uh, and then we have women in health. You know, if you are in health, you want to know about lifestyle medicine, what are the trends in the in the women's space, uh, in, the, in the health space, we're doing that thing. It's a massive event. If you're, in a, if you're a health professional, you want to know a lot about health-related, you know, issues as a woman. As a woman, make sure that you talk to, you know, you talk to Bonso. You know, when I talk about Felicia Babu Funde, I know I'm taking a second. It just reminds me way back. You, re you remember way back. You know, when we used to watch the show, Felicia, to Felicia, how nice. <laughs> remember those shows? Yeah. 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 You remember those shows? Yeah. Ah, you know, Imani, nobody pogies. He pogies. You remember those shows? You remember no man? Oh, no man in the car, passes. Oh, if a man need to come off, I don't care for man. Guys, you remember those shows? Yeah. About the mighty so, so. So, 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 ubita man. Na? Ah, when I got out, I didn't know I'm a black millennial. So then. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I had so much fun. That, once again, Chair, thanks a million. Let's give Chair another round of applause. Thank you so much. We really, really appreciate it. Make sure you attend our events. You go on social media. We are ULP or Unleashing Leadership Potential. We are on all leadership platforms. If you can find them, you go to EmpowerWorks. EmpowerWorks, we are on Twitter. EmpowerWorks events, we are on Facebook. We are on all social media platforms. If you don't find joy, call our offices, talk to Bonzo, or talk to Theo. But we are here to serve you, and we are here to make sure that it is our role to develop the next generation of leaders. Let's welcome our chair, Dede Morris Harebe, to give us the closing remarks. Thank you so much. About the oil and gas seminar, let's just watch it now. The status of the empowerment in the oil and gas industry um, can be described as certain areas we've made progress, certain areas we need to improve. In the ownership space, we've made significant progress. All the major oil companies have done a 25% BE deal, which was the target of the liquid fuels charter. I can even venture to say that uh, some of them now have fully paid their loans, and the Total and Sasso oil, and some have progressing quite significantly, and I'm confident that in the future we'll be announcing quite a, a number of unencumbered deals. So we, we've made progress there. We didn't meet the deadline in 10 years, but we have made progress. Areas where we need to make significant improvement is on gender and women empowerment. We make sure that we, throughout the management echelons of the oil 
and gas industry, we've got women representation. I think we need to look at who is owning these companies, who is entering into the wholesale space, and who is actually running it. Is it again women? Or is, it, is it again only men? Or women are, are playing a key role now? We are in a space now where we, this industry is transforming, not only just in terms of diversity, but the landscape is changing. But the second wave of transformation, which is the most important wave of transformation, which is talking to skills development, which is talking to entrepreneurial development, which is talking to socio-economic development, is that which is going to change the engine of the South African economy. And that is why we have this panel here today. We need to make sure that the provisions that pertain to oil and gas in this amendment bill are, encourage and incentivize um, inward investment so that your super majors do want to come and invest in South Africa so that we ourselves have the opportunity to participate in this industry. How will you create value and capture value in a highly competitive market? So if you are a wholesaler, you know that it's highly competitive, the margins are thin, so what differentiates you from the other business that is doing the same? Um, yes, it is an advantage to be a black woman-owned entity, but that can't be it all. You know, you've got to provide better service, you've got to be reliable, um, so we need to consider all those things. yourself and be ready when the opportunity comes. I like to quote this one coming from Obabu Khadeb. He doesn't believe in luck. He believes in preparing yourself and be ready. When the opportunity comes, you're ready. The IDC is about 77 years old this year and I think that we, we are very proud of that fact because for the past 60 years we have been uh, self-financing. The IDC has many, many units. And uh, the basic and uh, chemicals, uh, speciality chemicals business unit also looks at oil and gas. What we're saying, we are inviting everyone with commercial, everyone with not talking individual entities, but we're talking association with majority commercial interest to come and be part of the steering committee because currently what we have is the interim steering committee. We often want to think that transformation only happens when we've got a woman in place and you see more women or when we see a black person in place. That is not often the case, unfortunately. Uh, transformation will happen when it has to happen, mainly because of the leaders. Of course, the next, next month, so we must make sure that uh, uh, we celebrate our women. And this is an opportunity, Tara is 4th of July here. If you're really interested in understanding this industry, 
uh, you will meet uh, the, the ladies that are there is uh, Priscilla. She is the CEO of BP. I'm so proud of that, uh, that for the first time in our industry now at the head, uh, and we've got a woman running a major uh, company like BP. Uh, so be here. And the other lady, Priya, uh, I remember very well, almost about 12 or 15 years or so ago, she walked into my office. She was feisty, and she was really assertive about she wants to get into this business, she wants to get into this industry, and, uh, and, uh, I, and we had a lot of arguments and discussion, but opened up the opportunities, and now she's running a massive oil and gas business, and uh, she'll be here to tell her story, and uh, so come and learn uh, from that. And we're also going to go have uh, the women in, in oil and gas, uh, uh, Kumo, and Tla, she's been driving this organization that is empowering women and has done quite a number of deals. So invite other people uh, to come here uh, on that day. Uh, let me also just thank Lance. Where's Lance? Lance is a young man who comes here regularly and he's learned so much and he, f he felt today, you know what, for the, for the I'm going to sponsor uh, uh, all the catering that you're going to enjoy today. So let's give him a round of applause. That, that's the spirit of giving that we're promoting. Babum Tol. Ay, Baba Manai. Nyabonga, Baba. Nyabonga, Baba. Nyabonga. You know, Kulume, Nezwa Nami. Tintega Nanga Pagat. But especially but uh, especially because uh, you grew up in KZN, uh, you know, I also spent time at the, in Maran Hill. You, know? you took me back to uh, uh, the, the space uh, where I also spend a lot of my time there. So, but uh, I think your main message is, is basically summarized. It doesn't matter where you start. It doesn't matter. It matters how you finish, right? So, no excuse here. No excuse whatsoever. And when we say this, uh, people feel offended. But there's no excuse. Eh? There is no excuse. You either choose to have excuses or choose to have progress. Jerum told about the grand on the weekends in his father's uh, place uh, uh, just because of the flashing talent. <laughs> this is the second time we hear this message. Eh? Last year, last month, we had Baron, the, who's the chairman of the BSC, also had to say, he, he said, you know, he goes to church on Sunday. Because at the, the church, there was a, a flashing toilet. So where do, where's the windmill, guys? Eh? I'm sure you're inspired. Eh? It doesn't matter how tough you, you are, uh, situation in, of poverty you're in. So, Bob Mtolo, thank you very much. And then, Mamun Dolo, thank you very much. Continue to be um, examples. Personally, I'm very excited to see, I uh, call them young leaders coming in our industry. I want to And to see him, I see Priscilla, and I'm looking for others coming in and running these major oil companies. And there's somebody asked a question about mentorship. Uh, uh, Dave, stand up, stand up, stand up, Dave, stand up. And I'm sharing this under. First, he does a great thing. He always brings that daughter here, Linda. Linda, stand up there. Yeah. This is a good father, you see. Uh, mentoring. <laughs> Thank you, Sita. Dave, and together with all some of us uh, who are passionate about mentorship, uh, who, we're busy with a program called National Mentorship Movement. And Dave has been... He's now, he's retired, by the way. He's, but he's working harder than when he was. Uh, uh, he's together with the, uh, Paul and ourselves and steering committee. We're setting up a national mentorship movement. So there will be no excuse for you not to find a mentor. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. Uh, well, the question you asked, Babum Dolo, it is true. Uh, you can't mentor everybody. That is why I mean Babum Dolo. bears a manja again very ULP, what's that? It's because they came to me, but now I'm telling you, 
I call you ULP. I can't meet you every day. I'll meet you once, but after come to ULP. Uh, because uh, that's what it is. And then there after National Mentorship Movement, because here we, we can cater, I'll say, 150 people that are here. National Mentorship Movement, which Dave is, 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 is driving, uh, we're creating a system where wherever you are, with your cell phone or your, and if you've got a problem and you're running a small spaza shop, yeah, call up, and you've got a question, you can link it to the system, register, and there's a mentee, and then there will be a mentor that site, and there will algorithm with this digital uh, knowledge we have that will match you, and you'll find somebody that will uh, connect with you, and then you can mentor online. And this is a, it's gonna be a massive operation, and, uh, and, 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 uh, it's, it's part of contribution to, to this Tumamina program that we have. That's wonderful. Uh, so, go to a last time he asked for mentors. So, if you feel you've got, been coming to ELP now, you've benefited, and I like the word he used last time, he said there's a factory for, for leadership training, and it's your time to give. Go and register with them. And take his details, because we want to have the vision we have is massive, it's massive. And we, put, we speak about it in a prophetic way. 100,000 mentors that we wanna have. That will mentor a million mentees. And if one of, of those million mentees uh, and each own a business and they employ one pe person, that's two million people, uh, or two people, two million jobs we create. That's what we tend to want to make. Do you believe in that vision? Yeah. Are you gonna be part of that vision? I am in Ankhuno Pagam Susan. Are you going to be part of it? Yeah, I'm in Ankhuno Pagam Susan. Yeah. Who's this nigga? Everyone! Ankhuno Pagam Susan. Yeah. 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 That's good. That's wonderful. I think we've come to an end. And uh, uh, the sponsor of this place is uh, uh, today is Unidrive. There's, there's a young man there. there uh, 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 sponsored uh, uh, Soli Pagam Susan. And uh, uh, if you want to know more, he's going to help you. Let's, let's clap hands for him. <laughs> I think we've come to the end. Uh, let's enjoy uh, networking outside and have a drink and meet two or three people and uh, make sure that you uh, network. And uh, network is network, social capital. God bless you.